Hi, this is Paul Palmer. Today I want to talk about planning because one of the cores to any business is the direction you're going in. So where you start, where you finish, and then the journey to get there. But if you don't plan, if you don't plan where your business is going, how do you know where it's going to get to? And on a daily basis, if you don't plan, how do you know you're doing the right things? And similarly, on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a quarterly basis, people talk about doing a 90-day plan. Um, I know every senior exec that I know, when they start in a new role, the first thing they do is they do nothing for the first 90 days. They observe, they find out what goes on. They look at the opportunities, they look at the way that the business works, the way that it interacts with their department. And usually, somewhere near the end, they make an announcement and they, they change the structure usually. And maybe they bring new people in, maybe they bring somebody they're in, they were working with previously. But planning is key. And it's the same for quality. For medicinal product manufacturer for pharmaceuticals, it's really important to plan, have a quality plan to know what specification you want to achieve with your product, to know how you're going to get to that specification, to know what your process is, to know when your maintenance is, validation, when your extra work is, your routine work, your line checks, how you're going to pack it, and when you do pack it, what you're going to use. It's all, it's all, in some ways it's obvious, but it, it, it's, it's also often neglected. And people often get to the point where they need to sell something. Maybe they need to sell another batch of something. And, and they've, they've thought about the business continuity, but they've not thought about the plan to actually achieve that. And maybe they've not done the contract review. I had an interesting discussion yesterday and we were talking about the, the failings, I suppose, of businesses and, and the opportunities and how they improve and, and a top-down approach to business improvement, business process improvement and improving efficiencies. Because really, you do need the buy-in from the top. And I, I think I spoke about it in a, a video, oh, must be a couple of months back now, that when you set objectives, well, that's your plan, isn't it? That's the plan for the company for the year. And often I see executive teams working on setting the objectives for the year and it, it takes them the first quarter to agree it between the team. Well, what does that mean? Well, you've lost a quarter. So you're already three months behind on meeting the goals. And if somebody didn't predict the right objectives that they were gonna be set, well, maybe they're already failed. So what do you do if you've already failed? Well, give up, leave it till next year, coast, or do you work as hard as you can to achieve them for the next nine months? Depends really on, on the person, the individual, on how they want to behave, whether they're doing it for their business, whether they're doing it for themselves. I always find that it's, I'm, I'm the sort of person that will always do the best whatever activity I'm doing. I've done it for as long as I can remember. So and I'm sorry, but I'm not really going to change now. If I always do the best for whoever I'm working for, whether it's my company or somebody else's company, that's just the way I am. It's just the way I do it. And when the best doesn't necessarily achieve what the company wants, well, maybe I wasn't the right fit for them. And when I overachieve, well, of course, I'm happy. When something somebody else is doing puts something in the way and I, I can't meet the, my plan, well, I change the plan to accommodate somebody else's input. So if I'm set a set of objectives and they're set three months late, and that first quarter we were supposed to do a certain activity, well, I'm going to finish it as soon as I can in the second quarter and start on the second quarters as well. That's just the way I operate. Maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. So back to the point. Quality plan is setting the plan for that product. And you may be planning for the week, the month, the year, the product in general. What is it that you need to achieve? You need to have your validation and your qualification. You're verifying that your validation is still effective annually 
after you've done it right at the beginning. Maybe you want to make sure that your maintenance is working and still effective. Maybe you've made a significant change and you want to do it again. So they all go into your quality plan. What else goes into your quality plan? Design space is a good one. So <clears throat> when you've got a specific set of characteristics that you know about for the particular product, well, maybe that's the um, area that you need to focus on. Make sure you stay within that design space all the time. So always plan. Always think in advance of what might go right, what might go wrong. That goes into your plan and then you work to it and then you can achieve the goals. That's it for today. It's me, it's Paul Palmer. I'll talk to you soon.